In CI News this week, the House of Commons is set to debate removing end-of-life protections for vulnerable people. The government admits its party's definition of Islamophobia is not in line with equality law. And in the US, a teacher fired for not endorsing trans ideology is awarded over half a million dollars. Hello and welcome to CI News on the 4th of October. I'm Rhys Kerno. The House of Commons is expected to consider plans to legalise assisted suicide for those deemed to be terminally ill. The Prime Minister has already pledged to allow parliamentary time to debate the issue, and Labour MP Kim Ledbetter is set to introduce her proposals after coming top in the private member's bill ballot. But campaigners are warning that removing current protections will pressure the vulnerable to seek assisted suicide. Former Paralympian Baroness Tani Gray Thompson warned BBC Breakfast that such laws inevitably expand. There's a lot of worry out there about how this law could expand if it comes in, because there's already campaign groups saying it doesn't go far enough. It, we need to have euthanasia. You know, we need to have, um, you know, no restrictions whatsoever. We need to remove the six month general diagnosis. That's before we've even got to this stage. Dr Gordon MacDonald of Care Not Killing told LBC that those who are unable to get the care they need may feel assisted suicide is their only option. It's the same arguments. You know, the, the simple fact is that opening the door to this is extremely dangerous. It puts lots and lots of vulnerable people at risk. The choice of a few becomes lack of choice for the many. And with the state of the NHS that at the moment, and particularly palliative care, um, people will feel under pressure to opt for this just because they're not getting the care that they need. And that's just horrific, quite frankly, and it shouldn't be seen as a way to solve the crisis in the NHS. Faith Minister Lord Khan has admitted that the Labour Party's controversial definition of Islamophobia is not in line with equality laws. The vague definition adopted in 2019 states Islamophobia is rooted in racism and is a type of racism that targets expressions of Muslimness or perceived Muslimness. It prompted widespread concerns about the impact on free speech. Last month, Deputy Prime Minister Angela Rayner announced that the government is actively considering its approach to Islamophobia. But in a letter to the Faith Minister, the network of Sikh organisations warned that adopting the Labour Party's contested definition into law would have serious implications on free speech, not least the ability to discuss historical truths. Responding to concerns, Lord Khan pledged that the government would never inhibit the lawful right to freedom of expression when tackling religious hatred. Institute Director Kieran Kelly noted Angela Rayner's announcement was just one of a series of government proposals that threaten free speech and religious liberty. Such measures should concern anyone who cares about free speech. Christians need to be at the vanguard of those advocating for the precious religious liberty and freedom of expression we enjoy to be maintained. They were hard won down the years by believers. In many places around the world, our brothers and sisters can only long for such freedom. We must not take these great blessings for granted or treat them carelessly. Church leaders on the Isle of Lewis have urged Tesco to abandon plans to open on Sundays. Tesco's Stornoway store is the only UK branch to remain closed on Sundays, but is now consulting staff on opening seven days a week. Ministers from the Reformed Presbyterian Church and the Free Church of Scotland Continuing told the supermarket chain to respect the island's long-standing day of rest. It's quite simple. This is a place which has historically observed the Lord's Day. It's something that's woven very deeply into the fabric of the place and the heritage of the people. It's a feature of life here that even those who are not committed Christians or churchgoers still value the distinctive nature of the Lord's Day. And finally, a teacher in the US has received $575,000 in damages and legal fees after being wrongfully dismissed for refusing to talk about a gender-confused student using male pronouns. Former French teacher Peter Vlaming had used the girl's preferred name rather than male pronouns, but the school insisted he use them, despite his conscientious objection. I was wrongfully fired from my teaching job because my religious beliefs put me on a collision course with school administrators who mandated that teachers ascribe to only one perspective on gender identity, their preferred view. Following a court ruling last December, Vlaming has now settled the case and West Point School Board has amended its policies. To explore these stories and much more, visit our website christian.org.uk and be sure to subscribe and follow us across our social media channels. Thank you for watching. Have a blessed weekend.